If you haven't already, please also subscribe to us on Apple, Spreaker and Spotify. Just type in Brawl Boxing and you'll find us there. Thank you. Hey, thanks to Wow Hydrate who have sponsored the podcast. They provided me and the lads with some of their protein and vitamin waters, along with their elect- electrolyte drinks, which are the best on the market. Thanks for your continued support. We really appreciate it. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Brawl Boxing Podcast. I'm Kieran McCourt, and I'm joined by co-hosts Colin McGuigan and Ram McLaughlin. Well, guys, we're joined by a very special guest today. We've been chasing him for a while. He's left me on red. I don't know how many times. Yeah, we started the match for him, Darius. We, we went off with him and Frank, and we've waited a couple of months to get him back on, so we're delighted to welcome back Eddie Hearn. Edward, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Colm. Nice, nice hoodie. <laughs> Lovely hoodie. And I, I seen you picking nice me. Nice to see you still weekend, wearing you know? it. Nice to see you yeah, still wearing course. it. You know. Of course. You're talking, you're talking to Mr. Condon Boxing already. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, I, I've always liked Michael, but I thought he was fantastic last week. I mean, uh, it, it was it was the greatest fight I've ever seen. You know, I still can't believe it. Um, the atmosphere, everything. You know, I sat there the whole time. I, I was sat right in the middle. I had Jamie Condon to my left, and I had the dad to his left. And like in the first round, I could tell it was going to be one of those sort of quite awkward because I'm very vocal. And obviously, it's his son, you know, so he, he's going to be vocal as well. It's never a good idea, I think, to put people that close because, you know, he's obviously going to be full of emotion, and I am anyway. So Lee would come out, actually started the round really well, and I was, like, nearly up on my feet. Yeah, you know, every time, because Lee would punch you so hard, you could hear it through the whole fight, you know, up close, like, every time he hit the body. Yeah, there you go. yeah, oh, he's hurt, yeah, yeah. And then, obviously, Conlon. With a big overhand left, and the dad sort of stood up and went, Fuck, that was the same. Fuck, you know, have some of that. And at the end of the round, I was like, Look, just want to make it clear, like, I'm going to shout the whole fight, so you're welcome to do the same, but don't moan because, you know, I'd go, He's holding, me. shut up, he's not holding. <laughs> no, it's like really, really awkward, like the whole fight. And then obviously, I, I actually said to him, because I had a few pit Liam Smith and a few others behind, and I all kept saying, I think Lee Woods run that round. Oh, shut up. What are you talking about? You know, and, and I, I kept saying, he ain't out of this fight, but I never expected that to happen, you know. And, and actually, in the, probably in the, like, the, although there was a knockdown in the 11th, which was, you know, I, I actually think it was a knockdown, but it's irrelevant now anyway. But I was pretty much preparing myself to say to Mr. Conlon Sr., congratulations, because your son has been fantastic tonight. I mean, he really boxed beautifully the whole fight. I think against anyone else, you know, it was a different story, but just, I, I still can't get over it. It's like a dream, you know, because I kept thinking to myself, imagine if he, I said to Frank Smith, next, I said, imagine if he could just chin him with one shot. You know, Ben Davison said to me at the start of the 11, what do you think? I said, he has to knock him out to win. You know, he, he can't win the fight on points from here. And, then I screamed at Lee at the start of the 12th round, just saying, like, you've got to knock him out. You've got to knock him out. I think Michael's mistake was to be aggressive in that last round, really. A- actually, and 11, because he had the fight wrapped up, really. Mm. To be honest, I think it was to do with the, the knockdown, though, because that changed your mentality going out into the 12th. If, if Michael wasn't, we think it was a slip, but if it wasn't the slip, and it was a knockdown, but it was a slip, in my opinion. He I, think, I think it was, yeah, it was a slip, but it was caused by a punch. I mean, it's very, it's quite difficult, really. Like, if he didn't mm-hmm. land the punch on his chin, he wouldn't have gone over. Do you know what I mean? But it was definitely off balance. Like, yeah. there's, there's no doubt about it. But look, I mean, I just feel that, I think he was told going into the 12th that he needed, he needed a stoppage. Yeah, I if- actually disagree with that. I, I, I thought he was two, two rounds minimum up. Going into, going, going into the last round, probably three up. I, I agree with one of the scorecards. But I think as well, he was tired by then as well. Like he looked, Conlon actually looked really tired. He was like the eighth or the ninth, but then came back. Lee Wood looked like the round after that. He busted his, his load and he, he looked, so it was, it was just nonstop, but just an epic fight, epic fight. Yeah, there was a real, I think there was a real cloud over boxing after Catterall Taylor. And mm. I feel like 
a lot of people were like off oh, giving up in the sport blah blah maybe putting the casuals a little bit away from the sport and then i feel like that fight on saturday night that all anybody has spoke to me about literally all week is how good that mm. fight was mm. and sort of it's done the world of good for boxing i think so yeah i think i think we needed it and you know although maybe you could have disagreed by two of the cards by a round like pretty much they were all fair enough weren't they as well at the time of the stoppage which was nice as well um but yeah it I didn't, there's a lot of luck involved in great fights emerging. You know, we can put fights together and we can think, oh, this is going to be a great fight. I didn't, I didn't honestly expect Wood Conlon to be one of the greatest fights of all time. I thought it'd be a great fight. I thought it'd be interesting. I thought, it'd be, I thought Michael might be cute and try and be clever. And, but I, I never expected it to play out like that. I mean, some of the exchanges at the, 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 the stuff that we captured from the behind the scenes stuff, like up close from ringside, like the closing 20, 30 seconds of virtually every round from the sixth or seventh round, it was just incredible. And Lee Wood showed so much bravery as well because he was hurt so many times to the body. Like you could see it and he was just soaking it up. And um, you know, it, was a, it was a remarkable win. Pretty, pretty amazing for Lee Wood, to be honest with you, because like if anyone's been around like close to boxing in the circuit, you would have known that Lee Wood basically two, three years ago was just trying to get a six rounder somewhere for two and a half grand, you know, and he made a lot of money on Saturday and he'll make a load of money in the next fight. You know, maybe even the rematch, Jamie Conlon messaged me this morning just to say, like, because I'm the first time I've, I've caught up with him since the fight. Obviously, Michael Conlon is desperate for the rematch and, and Lee Wood has sort of got it all in his hands, really. But it's a big fight. I was just about to touch on that. So forget about the product in the ring for a second. Let's talk about everything around it. The production was unbelievable. The fans came in their thousands from Ireland. In my opinion, it seemed like there was more Irish fans there than, than English. I'm not too sure steady, you might be able to give us... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? That's, tw that's twice that's, you've done me in this You can't have a serious conversation with you, can you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? The for forest won earlier in the day, and they're obviously on the piss up from that game on the yeah, obviously the fight, which obviously helped as well the atmosphere. And yeah, but the Irish fans, fans are well? better. Stop being yeah, yeah, yeah the Irish fans are better. Fan. <laughs> but they said, I mean, it, it holds like nine thousand that arena, right? They said there was three thousand Irish in there, but I think something like two thousand ish travelled, right? And then obviously you've got the Irish that are already in England anyway and, you know, so forth. But, but they were really loud. And I think the one thing that I was really pleased about was everyone behaved themselves, really. Like, I'm sure there was a couple of little scruffles somewhere, but I didn't see, you know, normally you'd see everyone stands up and there's trouble here and trouble. Like, it wasn't like that. And when the stoppage came in, there was a few things pinged by me in the ring, a couple of coins and... Uh, a vape as well that I can see just before. <laughs> I see it on the ring. I thought, that sorry, Eddie. Sorry, Eddie. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, didn't know, I didn't know you were into the vape, Ryan, to be fair. But, um, but because of and like the fact that he was hurt and stuff like that, it, 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 it was one of those atmospheres. But everyone, I think he, because the fight was so good. I think everyone, and Lee was great as well. I got in the ring, he was like, he didn't realise that Michael was in trouble on the floor. And I sort of said, listen, and he was like, you know, to everyone. And I think everyone, like you said, Ryan, I think people see fights like that and just go, like, how can you not respect it? You know, it's, it's the greatest sport in the world, boxing. And sometimes, you know, going back to that decision a couple of weeks ago, it sort of makes you feel like, oh, I don't know about boxing. And then, you, like you said, you see a fight like that and you just think, it just... I mean, what it was, was the it numbers was like with the zone and the zone wise on the gate? Really good. I mean, like Michael, obviously there's a breakdown from Ireland and which was very positive as well. And then, you know, you've got your subscriptions, new subscriptions, and then you've got the audience as well. So it was like, I think the exact number is like 70% engagement across total subscription, which is good. I mean, I was watching an interview the other day. I think it was Bob Aram who's like, you know, the zone have got 60,000 subscribers. I mean, these people are absolute tits i mean total tits you always hear I mean, frank warren said as well i mean but uh, <laughs> listen i'll give you like i haven't got the exact numbers right in terms of his show on friday night which was on bt but i will pull the numbers and i guarantee you 
guarantee you our viewing figures on the zone on Saturday night for Wood Conlon smashed the BT Friday night figures to smithereens. <laughs> and we're only and we're only little old the zone, you know, <laughs> we're just a little small streaming platform out there, apparently. So um, um, no, I, the numbers I do numbers want to talk good. something with you. Mm. Um obviously as you may know, you probably do know I'm I'm sure you do. Michael Steele, I think, with top ranks coming to an end. Mm. You you've put yourself in you've said in numerous occasions, keeping a job going different fighters that you really want to build your your platform in Ireland. Is it something that you, you're interested in in terms of Michael? You've seen what he was like on Saturday, his stock is rose. In terms of mm. Ireland, I think we, we were actually talking about this before. Like Michael, everyone knew Michael was talented forever, but no one really knew if he had the balls or the heart. And I think he showed that now that there's a whole new generation of fans behind him also. So is that something maybe you'll be looking into down the line? Yeah, I think um, Ireland's always an important market for us. And I think when you look at the emerging stars coming through, um, Michael has always had great profile from the Olympics, of course. And I think what Saturday proved was that he is a world-class fighter, you know, and he's a, he's a, he is a future world champion. Sometimes the fans don't like the fact that a fighter's been sort of signed that big promotional contract got almost opportunities before they deserved them. But I always look at that and think, why are you bothered? Yeah, he's earned that. You know, he was a great amateur, obviously a little bit of controversy, but big character. Good luck to him. You know, he went out and debuted at Madison Square Garden. I think he was main event, wasn't he? Or something like that. So, but like you say, they really love it when you show great heart and you box really well. And he boxed fantastically well. Um, you know, you've got so much, even like early on in the night, you know, you go back to Thomas Carty. You know, it was only, what, six o'clock, I think, he was fighting. All of a sudden, it was like, you know, great noise in the arena. Gary Cully boxed really well. He's going to be a danger for everyone at 135 pounds. Keevan Agyarko kind of thrusted into co-main event with 9,000 people in their seats. You know, against what was actually quite a tough Mexican southpaw as well, late notice. You got Tommy McCarthy fighting Chris Billum Smith coming up, you know, could could win that, and then all of a sudden, so we're always looking for talent. You know, you could bring Michael Conlon back in a fight at the Odyssey, for example, and ping that place out immediately, even if it wasn't a huge fight, you know, with Keevan on, see how Tommy gets on, and, and all those other guys. So um I think that in terms of a, a streaming market, it's probably a little bit behind. Um, England, UK, in terms of its, may, not definitely not technology, but I just think, you know, maybe the, the way that people digest sport is just a little bit different at the moment there. I mean, we're seeing solid numbers, but not spectacular numbers. And I think Taylor Serrano will be a very interesting fight for us because I think that will really do big numbers. And I think the, the way that the zone operates is, you know, the, it's, a, it's a very transparent system. That because of the global platform, it's easy to see which territories are tuning in and, and, and which territories have potential. Like I'll give you an example. When a Coley boxed um, Sislak the other week, the numbers in Poland were huge. So all of a sudden, the zone look at that and go, wow, okay, so we now have X hundred thousand subscribers in Poland. So we should look at localised events in Poland. And obviously, the more support that comes in from Ireland, the more they would look at that market and say, we should be doing more in Ireland. So everything's sort of scientific and built around the numbers, but taking the numbers away, I know how fun it is to do a show in Ireland. And, you know, if we can do one, great. And I think for Michael Conlon, the only thing that will be sitting in his head now for the next, well, maybe forever, is rematching Lee Wood, you know. And is, it, is it a possibility at the city? I think so. I mean, I think... From from the from the from the well more the interviews and things I've been hearing from Lee Wood and Ben Davison, I don't think it's top of their list. Um, I think there's three options. I think there's Leo Santa Cruz. I think there's the winner of Warrington Martinez next week, obviously, which could be a really big fight. And there's the Conlon rematch. Now the Conlon rematch may be the biggest of all those three. You know, I mean, we have just witnessed one of the greatest fights I've ever seen. And you go from Nottingham Arena 9,000 to the city ground. You know, Lee Wood, I don't know if Santa Cruz does the city ground. You know, Warrington does. Mm. But 
and Martinez probably might not, but mm. certainly the Conlon remake does. But I think you know with Lee Wood, it's like I, I get a fighter to that position who he's now was he thirty three something like that, and I just think like I can't believe what's happened to you. You know, you're you're going to be a millionaire, you know, and you're going to secure your kids' futures like for and maybe even if you keep going for another couple more, maybe their kids as well. So I look, I look at it now. If I'm, I'm, I know I'm a promoter, but if I'm advising Lee Wood, I'm looking at those three options with one simple uh, decision to be made. How much, you know? So and and if I'm Lee Wood, I'll go. Don't really see the point in rematching Condon because I've beaten him and I want to fight in America. I want to do this, but how much? And then it depends on how much Michael Condon wants. Depends how much his own want to pay. Depends if you can fill up the city ground, which I believe we did. But the answer is a lot of money. So you know, you know how the old saying goes: "Earn with Hearn." Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. <laughs> but, but Was thing, it in that book? Thing, yeah, but the thing is, Kieran, he's like <laughs> sometimes you sit down with a fighter, or, or, or normally their manager or their advisor, and this is how much we want. It's like, like the numbers are so transparent. You know, when you're looking at an event or a show, you know, you've got your your revenue streams you got so you got your domestic tv your international tv your sponsorship and your gate right and then you've got your expenditure you've got the undercard you've got venue hire you've got hotels you've got flights you've got drug test testing you've got cars you've got security you've got you know all this and that's how much money is in the show but there's no real science from a fighter or their team when they're going i want two mil you know it's like <laughs> I had it with Kel Brook, Kel Brook the other day. You know, we all offered him a great deal to fight Conor Ben. And his dad came back and he went, Kel wants 10 million. And it's like, what? Where have you got that from? It's yeah. just like, did you just like that number? Like, it's not, it's not really even close, is it? It's like treble what I've just offered you. Uh, on Kel Brook, I've told this on the story a few times. The first time I met you, Eddie, I was about 17. And it was at Frampton Martinez 1 in the Odyssey. And yeah. I got a photo with you. You were a complete gentleman. It was before you were obviously a universal superstar. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I would, I would, to be fair, I would have turned it down now. But. I know you would have. I know, he's got his own book guy. But I asked, I asked Kel Brook, I asked Kel Brook for a photo and he said no. And I think he was only a British champion oh, really? at that time. So buzzing, I was buzzing that you didn't take the you didn't take the fight. Because like to be fair, obviously that even that fight, it did good numbers, but like there's no sort of Prosperity. Not, massive numbers, though. not 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 the numbers they hoped it would, and they can they can, you know, they can sort of smoke it up. But they wanted that fight to do eight hundred thousand buys. They're saying it got to five hundred thousand, but I'm not so sure. But listen, I would have done it. It's not like I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh yeah, I turned that fight down. I was in the discussions, but I just didn't think that. Again, same same thing. You know, when when you're running a business and when you, especially in boxing, you have to rely on that that mathematical. Um, you know that that solution to to decide how much you're going to spend on a fight or a fighter. If not, you go skin or you do your conquers, and we're not really into that. You know, like Frank you're Roy. Always, you're never going no, skin. <laughs> no, but because of that, but because of that reason, you know, and not because you you behave or you you make decisions on bravado and ego. Because you know, Frank Warren's always sort of said about my old man. Oh well, he's just a chart account. Yeah, he is. Fucking great. What a result. I'm so glad he's a chartered accountant, you know, but, but that's how you've got to run your business. And like that Kel Brook thing, it was like, look, and they were sort of playing me off against Sky. You know, if you pay this, you can get it. But if not, we're going to go to Sky. And I'm like, and in the end, you just have to go, good luck, boys. And listen, they, 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 did, they did great. I mean, they, they had it off. Yeah, I mean, Khan yeah. might want to fake that, Connor Ben, but he's not, he's not, Going to retire, is he? That would be a good fit. I mean, Amir Khan came on to me the other day and said, I mean, every, everything at this stage, and I don't blame him because Amir has done everything, but everything's just about how do we nick as much money as possible. <laughs> so he's just like, it's quite an interesting situation, actually. So Amir Khan has lost to Kel Brook. Amir Khan's got a rematch clause, which he's ex exercised <laughs> purely because he wants to see if he can get any money not to fight Kel Brook. Right? <laughs> so... But now he's sort of, he's pretending that he wants to fight Kel Brook. Kel Brook probably wants to fight Conor Ben, but he's probably getting all kinds of bullshit in his ear about other stuff. And then Amir Khan now comes on to me and says, okay, how much to fight 
Conor Ben. And now Emmy Khan comes on to me and says, okay, because Sky have got the option, like if it's commercially viable to do the rematch, which they're probably saying it's not. So then Amir Khan comes on to me and says, if Sky don't want to take this fight, would you be interested? I was like, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a girl coming up to you going, I'm going to ask this um, guy out over it, but if he's not interested, any, like, I'll come back to you. So, oh, if yeah, Frank, if you Frank isn't that. interested, <laughs> yeah, if Frank exactly. Smith or so, Frank Bourne aren't interested, Eddie, yeah, are you? Exactly, I'll come back. Yeah, exactly, I'll come back. So, and, then, and then he came on to me the other day and he said, how much for me to fight Conor Ben? I was like, bloody hell. So... <laughs> I don't know. I think um, I, I like either of those fights. Connor, Connor's in a really good position. I mean, I know all of a sudden the problem is with hype. You know, Connor Ben fights Chris Van Heerden. First Southpaw he's ever boxed. Van Heerden's nice and tough. It's, it's a good fight while we're waiting to go into the, the big ones. Oh, Chris Van Heerden. I said, 18 months ago, Chris Van Heerden's last fight, he was headlining on Showtime against Boots Ennis, who I think is the best welterweight in the world. But Connor's going real nice. Like, really nice trajectory. I'm really pleased with the way he's progressing. I think he's going to be a big star, but uh, if he can beat Van Heerden, he needs a Brook, a Broner, even a Khan. I don't mind the Amir Khan fight. I think, you know, that's certainly a lot of people would tune in, but um, yeah, it's just funny. Like the, the market's changed so much, obviously with us leaving Sky and going to the zone and having this big budget, Sky have stepped up, you know, and it's got, it's got really competitive, which can only be great news for the fighters. So it's just going back to the Irish fighters one more time. Um, obviously, you've got like the likes of Keevan now. Um, you've got like a few other. You've, you have Tommy, which is coming up. We're going to quickly touch on as well. Um, wh- who are we to give you advice? Like, right? I reckon you make a beeline for Mick Conlon, number one. <laughs> number two, you set up Matchroom HQ in Belfast. If you need three charismatic guys to run it, we're right here for you. Um, yeah. And then you, you bring back, mate, you bring back these big Odyssey nights because we're fucking dying for uh, them here. Like- I know, but that's the thing. Like, the great thing about certain cities, Newcastle was one, like Liverpool's another, Leeds as well. All these seasons, like, you know, if you get it right, you banged it out, you know? So, like, when we went back to Newcastle and started going back there with Ritson, bang, like, they were like, oh, we've been dying for a, a big night of boxing. And the same in Belfast at the Odyssey. You know, if you get, but you've got to get it right and you've got to get the right people and like it's the right mix. And But some people, the problem is, is they don't get built on the way out. Ryan Burnett was a good example. You know, we did well with Ryan Burnett, but we never banged the place out. And you think, you know, that guy was fighting for the world title, then unifying the world title. Still had like five and then I think six and a half or seven in there. It was good, but it's like the, it, the build's important. Keevan's only had 11 fights. He's a baby, really. You know, and, and, and how good will he be? That will depend on probably the progression over the next year. I think he's a, a very, very talented fighter. Tommy, you know, Gary Cully, Mick Conlon, all these people. So the, the good and the bad thing about Irish fight fans, and particularly when you go into Belfast, is the, the well-educated fight fans. And the bad thing about that is you've got to put on a good show. <laughs> Liverpool's the same. Liverpool's the same. If you put on a good show in Liverpool packed out straight away if you put on an average show in Liverpool you get an average crowd and that's the same in Belfast because they know they're boxing so you know I think um, a lot depends on on what you can deliver do you think do so, you think Keevan and Fowler somewhere down the line fight. Keevan against Fowler Keevan against Jason Quigley Keevan against Spike O'Sullivan Keevan against Luke, Luke Keeler you know, these, these are the fights. Keeping against Felix Cash. I mean, like, you know, these are the keeping against Eubank. And that's a big fight for Belfast. You know, that's the yeah. kind of fight. And, and actually, to be fair to Eubank, one thing that he likes to do, because his dad did it a few times, was go into people's backyards. I remember with Sam Story and, you know, all those guys years ago. So Eubank against Keevan in at the Odyssey, big fight. But we're, Keevan, you know, Keevan's had 11 fights. And that was, I would say... I felt a bit harsh on him on Saturday, but I did give him that slot and it was like, you know, I saw him sort of walk out and he, he, he lapped it up and it wasn't his best performance, but I'll tell you what, he would have learned so much from that. You know, it was, it was, it was huge for him, but he needs another, see with Keevan, I want to, next fight, I want to put him in with like a Zerometa or, you know, maybe if Suleski gets beat by Charlo, like, you know, comfortably, like, like, a, a good, good, solid name, and then I think from there we can start moving on 
a Rosado maybe. Like Keeman against Rosado at the Odyssey later on in the year, end of the year, is a kind of fight that, that could make sense. But you have to, if you want to invest in those fighters, at some point you have to make the gamble to go. You know, but the problem is now the shows are so big. I had this conversation with Chris Billum Smith and um, Shane McGuigan. They really want to fight in Bournemouth. But I just can't go to the zone at the moment and say, Chris Billum Smith and, and Tommy McCarthy, let's, can we do a show in Bournemouth? It's a really good co main event, which it is on the Ben Van Heerden card. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted Chris to take that fight because there's no value in fighting someone no one's ever heard of. You know, when I went to Shane and respect to Shane McGuigan and Chris Billum Smith because they accepted the rematch. They didn't have to take the rematch. No, that was, but I said to him, look, you, you've got to be in fights that people want to see. That first fight was brilliant. You know, I loved watching that fight. So, and it was, it could have gone either way. You, you edged the fight. So let's see it again. It's common sense. Um, and that's, that's kind of like the conversation you have with other domestic fights. Now, you know, a fight that could get made um, early next week is Boatsy against Craig Richards. Like, and there's no reason why the winner of that shouldn't fight Callum Johnson or Anthony Yard or even Callum Smith. You know, Callum Smith should really get a shot at the world light heavyweight title. But if it's not available, at what point do you just say, you know, it's a bit like Liam Smith and Anthony Fowler. At the time, both fighters were like, never, ever thought of that fight once. Next thing, you've sold 10,000 tickets and you get an amazing night in Liverpool. So, you know, we're here just to try and make the good fights. I, w- I want to touch on next week a bit. Um, me and Ryan will be there. Unfortunately, Kim has to miss it, but um, it's it's a massive night. Do you kind of see, in our opinion, potentially it could be end up a three way street, Kiko, Warrington, and Michael Conlon? Because if if it may happen that Lee Wood goes to unify with Santa Cruz, is that then the thinking? Hold on a second, we could make maybe in the summer uh, the winner. Uh, in the park in Belfast at the villa? Well, I think that if Josh Warrington win, Josh Warrington's turnaround has been incredible. I mean, fuck, I still can't believe we boxed Maurizio Lara as a warm up, you know, <laughs> but unfortunately, that, that's, that's, that's been and gone now. I watched him the other night when I was in San Diego and I was like, I cannot believe that we like, and it's just one of them where I sent a few names to the team. And to be fair, like you look at Maurizio Lara's record. If you watch tape on him, like, he kind of looks like the guy you should be accepting. And then that week, I was, like, watching him on the pads going, and then obviously in the ring, and then the other night. Um, Andy but, Ruiz vibes. Yeah, yeah, it was, actually. <laughs> that, and it was the, that was the same as well with Andy Ruiz. But I think that um, if Warrington wins, he's really going to want to unify, because that's what he wanted to do. You know, whether that's Navarrete, whether Lee Wood gets elevated to super champion, or whether he fights the winner of, Wood and Santa Cruz or whatever, but I think if Kiko wins, I think that's probably a good a good spot for Mick because Kiko, well, everybody knows Kiko in Belfast. You now Kiko against against Conlon outdoors in the summer, that's a big big fight for the world title. So it's going to be interesting. Like I think it's a really tough fight for Josh Warrington because I'm watching Kiko train. I know he's getting on, but he just looks so confident and so full of life. And he was actually the one. Because I said about the, the Galahad rematch, you know, going to America, and he was like, I want Warrington. He goes, I fought him before, and I felt I should have won that night, but I know now. Like, I know I can knock him out. So I think it's going to be a really, another a really interesting fun fight. Has anyone, has anyone checked what he is, Kiko Martinez is? Because he looked about 40 <laughs> in 2014. 47. He, at least, at least. <laughs> yeah. and he, he's always... <laughs> but I tell you what, that, that Kid Galahad fight, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I mean, Kid Galahad battered him, battered him for, for five rounds or whatever it was. And I just, it wasn't even like, you know, when you got um, that fight with, uh, obviously, last week, you could you, could, you knew Lee Wood can punch. And, but, but that fight, I was like, absolutely no way. No way is, is Kiko Martinez winning that fight. And, you know, he's, he's a tough kid. It'll be a war with, with, uh, with Warrington because he won't stop coming forward. You've got the uh, Bridges as the chief support on that, I believe, is it? And, and well, Maxie yeah, Maxie Hughes. Hughes, Maxie Hughes is really the chief support, but because yeah. he's got the same trainer as Josh Warrington, we had to separate the two. So Ebony Bridges will go before the main event. Actually, a really good fight. Cecilia Roman, who's one of the best world champions, actually, 
certainly in the lower weight classes as well. And, you know, the thing is with Ebony is you've actually got to respect her. Like she puts in the graft. And I know that, you know, it's waning in the laundry and stuff like that, but that's only part of the act. That's an act to get attention, to grow followers, to grow interest. She can fight and she's really tough. And that'll, that'll be a war as well. She doesn't stop coming forward. And, you know, she's, she's really tough. I'd love to see her win a world title, actually. I think, I think it would, you know, she's put a lot of work in. So but it's going to be a, a very tough fight. You make sure you bring your sunglasses to the way in. Yeah, no. <laughs> True. Do you think if, do you think if she if she wins that she, you could see the Courtney rematch afterwards? Yeah, I mean you've got Jamie Mitchell, you've got Courtney. Courtney's coming back from a knee injury. So whether she's going to be ready to jump straight into a big fight in the summer, we'll see. But she's due to rematch Jamie Mitchell. But then you've got Bridges against Mitchell. Bridges against Courtney's always going to be a big fight because they just don't like each other. You know, yeah. and, and and that's what that's what makes a big fight. Here, Eddie, I've seen, I've looked at your finger there. Is that from the body shot, the Frank, yes. uh, the Frank Smith? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it fucking embarrassing? Was it? Embarrassing. Actually, is yeah, it actually? Yeah, it was, Can we yeah, see like, it? Yeah. <laughs> so basically, I ate him with a right hand, and he hit his elbow, and I was like, oh. but there was quite a lot of people watching it. So I thought, like, what are you going to do? Stop. So carry on. <laughs> and then literally, I thought I'll just throw the left hand, and then one round later. <laughs> I threw the right hand again and he hit him on exactly the same spot on the elbow. And like this bone is just like sticking out up here at the moment. So yeah, oh, it's God. terribly embarrassing, but it's definitely my time. My time is over. You went to town so, on it. It was like a big brother. Did you see, did you see the Frank Warren interview the other day? Oh, mate. We've been sending it around everywhere. So he goes, he's going off on one and he's going, I think the interview, I think it was IFL said like, like, you know, he was moaning about the zone. And I said, yeah, but Eddie Hearn's like, got the profile. Profile? What profile's he got? Oh, and then he goes, <laughs> he goes, oh, I mean, I see him beating up that little fat kid. <laughs> oh, oh, <Eddie. laughs> so obviously we've clipped that. Someone in the office has clipped it and it's gone out and all the group chats were like, poor Frank Smith. Do you know what I mean? Oh. And Frank Smith, the Frank worst Smith part is, is like, like, Frank Smith is the fucking nicest guy ever. Like, I know. Like, like, he why is he me on. We're in the hotel point. and he went to me. I'll try and do some body sparring tonight. I thought, you know, <laughs> been doing a bit of running lately. I thought that'd be actually good fitness to like mix it up a little bit. We went in there. Next thing, we got the entire like team from matchroom boxing. And then like all the fighters that were in the hotel just came in. And I was thinking, this is getting a bit serious. But like my old man phoned me the next day. He goes, what are you beating up Frank for? <laughs> half your size. I said, I don't know. Like he may be half my size, but he's about the same weight these days as well. So, <laughs> oh <my yeah>. <laughs> Do you know what though? Like it's the biggest boxing promotional company in the world, and the two faces of it are battering each other. I know, I know. It's not. <laughs> it is like corporately. Like I, the thing is, is we we should never change really. And although like we're a family business, and although the the business is getting bigger and bigger all the time, it's it's sad to lose that. You know, like to feel yeah. that you can't do that. I mean, and I I really disagree <laughs> with that. Like, yeah, there might be some people go, oh, you know. That really wasn't a good look corporately. It's like, well, guess what? We do what we fucking want. So that's how that's how a good look a good look corporately would be Tommy Coyle filling your bags then. Yeah, know. exactly. Well, same thing. Same thing. You know, that's the same thing. But we just like to you should never take yourself too seriously. But and yeah, it was a lot of people sort of that, you know, that, that like to sort of moan about things like that. Oh, do you see them in the ring? It's like, mate, we're just having a lot. Like that's just us. So and and, and we like everyone to have fun. Eddie, before before we let you go, because we know you're a busy man and you've a lot going on and you have to go and get your finger seen to as well today. <laughs> but uh, we've got a of tweets about this, so we just wanted to ask you. So a lot of people have been tweeting us asking, when is Eddie Hearn signing Brock Box for matching? Can you give us like a definitive date or anything? Sorry, what, what are we doing? Signing Brawl Boxing? To Matchroom and the zone. There's so, really? many, so many tweets today. So many. Really? Go, uh, yeah, go I check mean, your Twitter. So to be honest with you, I've, I've seen it across my social media as well. I mean, I've, <laughs> clip it, clip to, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think if we can keep getting the sign-ups in Ireland, boys, then, you know, I think we've got a good chance of doing something. Because let's be honest, if we were going to come to Ireland, the only thing people would work with is you lot. Oh, you know, I love it. So, you know I mean? Eddie, once you sign us, we'll see the subscriptions on the zone. Right. Really? Oh, so it's got to be like that, is it? So that That's the way well, I think it works. Normally, it'll be the other way. The goat, oh, the goat. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a funny story. <clears throat> My dad's just just published his autobiography, right? 
really, really, uh, see my book, I did it in about three months, right? He's been writing his for about 10 years. <laughs> really, really, uh, really thought about the title, my life. That was it. And uh, like, <laughs> I said to him the other day, cause he was getting, you know, when he got his deal, obviously he got paid a lot less than I did, which was really to my amusement as well. <clears throat> but I said to him the other day, you know, how, how's your pre-sale numbers? And he's like, yeah, 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 solid, solid. I'm like, they weren't solid, were they? Do you know what I mean? So we're having a right life. So if you're watching this, go out and buy Barry Hearn, my life. He's actually a really good read, but... but Eddie, just, Eddie like, Kaysen off his own dad. This is why we love him. Like, no, this is what oh, we like. This is what we like. Yeah, it's competition all the way. <laughs> Eddie... Eddie, it's always a pleasure to get you on. We're going to keep an eye on you every, every fucking No month. problem. So, we'll do another one in about four years, yeah? Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, see it, McCarthy, Bill and Smith, if there's an e egg thrown at you, it'll be me again. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's, um, let's, let's get together with uh, maybe in the build-up to McCarthy, Bill and Smith 7. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was thinking Manchester Hotel. Sit down with yeah, 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 See, yeah, when you yeah. watch that back, my eyes were lighting up as he just said it until the yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually thought he was going to say Ran and call. I'll speak to you next week at Warrington Martinez. Then he comes off of that. <laughs> I will see you there. I'll promise. I'll see you there, boys. <laughs> Addy, see you there, Addy. Addy. Thanks, Thanks, thanks again so much. All right, guys. Take care. Legendary. Thanks, Thanks for all that white girl problem, let her back in autumn. Every gift I try to get her, she already got him. Messing with the TA, wonder what she taught him. Work her way down, literally to the bottom. Where are all my best friends? I cannot ignore them. Never gonna text them, I am too important. Look at what my dad bought, yeah, it was imported. He took a second loan, cause our family can't afford it. Nice guy, found to finish, nice to fit the sport. Call her CeeLo, cause she crazy in her arms are kinda short. Got a traffic ticket once, but she didn't go to court. And she interrupts my sessions every time that I record. So I tell her I got so much shit up on my plate. It's a buffet. Now we out in Paris and these women look like Mazze. Superficial, she just needed combs like Puffet. You don't need to go, but I think you need to trust me. Come take a drink with me, forget all.